In this video, I'm going to go over five offensive tackles and five interior offensive linemen who are projected to be drafted in the 2024 NFL Draft in order of their consensus big board placements. Be on the lookout for your team in this video. You may have some connections to these blockers. Enjoy. Two really good tackles take the top of this list and the first of those two is Olu Fashanu out of Penn State. Fashanu could have entered the draft last season, but man, has this season been full of pure dominance for the blindside blocker. Fashanu moves laterally at high efficiency, being a nice athletic blocker who can secure the edge as well as swing over to the inside and block interior guys. He's a fantastic adjuster in the pass game, being able to stop speedy athletic rushers from taking the edge and being able to counter physical moves as well. Even in the run game, Fashanu is so effective, proving his ability to block in both ways. There are very minimal negatives to Fashanu's game, but one lingering issue is his pad level. He sometimes stands too high on his blocks, allowing for smaller rushers to manipulate his technique and get around him. I guess you could also say he's got more to build in the tank, but I wouldn't particularly state that as a negative. Overall, Fashanu is such a good blindside blocker, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was the first or second non-quarterback off the board. His consensus mock draft placement is currently third overall to the New England Patriots. The second top tier tackle in this draft is Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. Alt was originally my offensive tackle one when I watched his film last offseason, but consensus shouldn't take away from the fact that he is still so good. Alt is another athletic blindside blocker with some fantastic movement skills. He uses his top tier technique to prevent as many pressures as possible with the ability to block both speed rushers and power rushers. When I looked at film, I saw more success in the run game as he's great at forming gaps in the line especially against speed rushers. But as a pass blocker, he's allowed 4 pressures this season which is crazy. On the downside, he's got good play strength but mediocre balance, possibly leading to power rushers moving him on contact. His hand technique is still using work as he often struggles to recover after a lost snap. Finally, he still has room to grow his overall play strength, but even without that, he's a franchise left tackle. Alt is a very nice prospect in both the pass and the run. He will be a great player. His consensus mock draft placement is 6th overall to the Green Bay Packers. Alabama constantly produces offensive line talents, and JC Latham is no different. I am by no means against selecting this guy, but I do believe he has some concerns. Nonetheless, he still deserves a lot of looks. Let's start with the fact that this guy is 6'6", 360 pounds. He's so dominant in the run game with his ridiculous knockback ability and play strength to immediately free space for the runner. He's a fighter as well, and surprisingly, he has a pretty low pad level, helping him be a force in the pass game as well. Overall, this kid is just an absolute monster. Now, I have a couple negatives. First off, he's nothing to adore athletically, and his lateral movement isn't fantastic for the next level. He also plays at right tackle, and if you know me, you know I value left tackles and give them bonus points for being a blindside guy. Also, just a pointer that this isn't the biggest negative, but given his size and mobility, I would not be shocked if he was moved to guard in the NFL. Latham is such a massive dude, and he is going to be a force to be reckoned with at the next level. His consensus mock draft placement is 12th overall to the New York Jets. Georgia's own Amarius Mims comes up in 4th on the consensus list. Another pretty physically dominating dude, he's going to be looked at very heavily. Mims is another physically dominant right tackle who has insane play strength. He's so amazing in the run game, having both fantastic knockback ability and sneaky explosiveness to catch edge defenders off guard. He's also got several positive technique abilities with his hands to knock off blockers and with his feet to mirror movements. Now, once again, right tackle, you get the deal by now. He's good athletically, but he will struggle against athletic speed rushers as he can push them around the edge but won't be too effective when they cut against him. 
Additionally, he recently came back from ankle injury, and that adds on to his limited experience at the college level. I do believe Mims has the upside to be one of the better right tackles in the NFL. For some reason, he doesn't have a consensus mock draft placement, but some common mock drafts have him going to the Titans or the Rams. Rounding out the top five here is Duke senior Graham Barton. Him and Talese Fuaga have been switching spots at five and six but both of them are consensus first round selections. Barton's upside begins with his very solid versatility. He started his freshman year by receiving snaps at center, but since then, he skipped the guard position and moved directly to left tackle. His size replicates a nice tackle, and he is, being a consistent pass blocker with nice abilities to mirror defenders off the edge. He's got good leverage as a tackle, making it known that he's not only a pass blocker, but also a run blocker with his knockback abilities. Negatively, he's sometimes overly aggressive as a pass blocker, and speed rushers with top-notch elusiveness will easily get past him. Barton is also a tad scheme specific, as with Duke, he never received much gap opportunities. Finally, he's versatile, but it's uncertain what position he actually plays best at. Teams are going to value Barton because of his such good versatility and his ability to be a phenomenal blindside blocker. His consensus mock draft placement is 25th overall to the Miami Dolphins. There are a lot of other offensive tackles who are projected to go in this draft, but here are the next five on your screen right now. All right. We got through the top five offensive tackles. It's now time to get through the top five interior offensive linemen. While interior offensive linemen aren't valued much, teams should still look at Georgia center Cedric Van Pran, the consensus best interior guy in this draft. Van Pran has three years of starting experience on a phenomenal offense. That should say enough. So yeah, experience is obviously a positive. But in terms of his game, he's such a phenomenal pass blocker. He's going to deal with power guys at the next level, but you know he's good when he can take on both them and speed guys if needed. In fact, he's more athletic than powerful in my opinion, and if he needs to dump his guy to help out another blocker, he has the flexibility to do so. Negatively, his play strength is under average for your typical NFL center. Obviously, you can already tell he's a bit different, but I'm still concerned. Another concern is the fact that Van Pran is the smallest dude we've covered so far, and he's got more of a build for an outside blocker. I think Van Pran could break this trend and become a top draft pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. His consensus mock placement is 51st overall to the Philadelphia Eagles. Who's the second best guy according to consensus? Donovan Jackson out of Ohio State. The best offensive guard in this class, Jackson was a force to be reckoned with last year. Jackson's positives begin with his very nice play strength, being a powerful blocker with nice technique and leverage abilities. As a run blocker, the guy never gives up, forming gaps for inside zone runs. In pass protection, he's got very good ability to cover power rushers and stays on his feet with his very good contact balance. On the downside, you guys heard me say he was a force last season. This year he has not taken the jump he needed, and he's been undoubtedly worse as a blocker, especially in the run. He's also one of the smaller guys discussed today, but honestly, all of these interior offensive linemen are pretty small for the position. Finally, he's not the best at blocking outside of his frame, and athletic pass rushers won't have difficulty getting past him. Jackson is a nice developing interior guy, but teams should still proceed with caution. He has common mock draft spots to the Denver Broncos and the Philadelphia Eagles. In the third slot on this list, Consensus has Boston College's Christian Mahogany. Mahogany has the experience to come out of college and make an immediate impact in the NFL. Mahogany is one of the best run blockers that college football has seen in the last decade. He's so powerful in his leverage, forming gaps almost every time on the inside. He's explosive off the snap, and his first contact is so damn good. He also returned from ACL surgery this season and has shown off very well. Now, that's where the negatives start. He was a top prospect for the 2023 draft before tearing his ACL, and obviously, a big injury in college is always going to be a negative. Outside of that, 
He's not fantastic athletically, and while he will face more power than speed, it's still something to watch out for as the draft rolls around. Mahogany tore his ACL and still recovered well, so teams will be looking for him in this draft. Common mocks have him heading to the Seattle Seahawks. Two guys left to go, and West Virginia's Zach Frazier comes in fourth on this consensus list. Frazier is a good guy to rely on the inside, and his tape really reflects it. Frazier may have the best technique of anyone in this class. He's so good with his hands and arms to keep defenders away from the quarterback or running back. In pass protection, he's very aware of his surroundings, and he uses that phenomenal technique to prevent any pressure. He also started at guard and center, and his positional versatility will draw in teams. On the flip side, he's not good athletically. Lateral movement is an issue, and translating to the next level, it probably means he will be stuck to center. He's also not fluent, nor is he great with recovering, so generally, all of his negative traits just fall under athleticism. Despite not being athletic, his elite technique will make teams fall in love with him. Most commonly, he's mocked to the Cleveland Browns. The final player on this list is UConn interior guy Christian Haynes. Haynes may look atypical, but his prototypical skill set will draw in teams. Haynes is a powerful guard with fantastic leverage at the snap, making him most worthy in the run game. He's also got solid athleticism as well, being explosive off the line and having his steps match those of an incoming rusher. He's also got the grit to never give up on a play, and it shows in his ability to recover. Negatively, he's 6'2". That's self-explanatory for why it's a negative. He's also a solid pass protector, but it's nothing to love, especially when noting he has no elite traits that will translate that way to the league. Finally, he does tend to commit a lot of holding penalties, which does not look good resume-wise. Haynes is a smaller guard, but his combination of play strength and athleticism should translate well to the NFL. Common mocks have him heading off to the Vikings or the Bears. And obviously, there are a bunch of other interior offensive linemen who are projected to be drafted in this class. The next five are scrolling on your screen now. Which offensive lineman do you want your team to take? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I got a lot of NFL draft content coming out soon, so if you're not subscribed, you're missing out. Once again, I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism, and thank you guys so much for choosing this channel as your source of sports coverage. I'll see you guys in the next video.